can make a chart calculation such as estimated position or course to steer, we need to know which direction and how strong the tidal stream is, first of all, the location we're in, and secondly, at the particular time of day uh, that we happen to be uh, sailing. One way of doing that is to use the tidal stream atlas, an example of which you can see here. This is the example you get with the RYA training on Mac. Now, first thing to say is it's just a mini version of your chart covering the area you're interested in. It's got a lot less detail, but what it does have are these arrows, which indicate which direction the tide is flowing in. And next to each of those arrows, there are some numbers, which indicate how strong the tide is. Now, before we go into detail about those arrows, the first thing to point out is that at the top, and it's normally found at the top, there is a high water time that this tidal atlas refers to. In this case, wherever we are on this chart, we need to use and need to know the high water time in Victoria in this example. So if you read the top here, four hours before high water in Victoria, you'd expect the tidal stream to look something like this. So if you were down here, you'd expect the tidal stream to be flowing roughly sort of northwest to southeast. Now, as the well, title indicates, that's just for four hours before high water in Victoria. So what we have in this tidal atlas is an example of what the tidal stream will look like every hour before and after high water in Victoria. Starting off six hours before and moving all the way to high water and moving all the way through to six hours after high water, in this case in Victoria. It's good practice when using one of these tidal stream atlases to First of all, before you leave, work out the high water time of the reference port, so in this case Victoria. And when you've done that, you can mark up in pencil on the top of each page the actual time that each page refers to. Now let's have a look at these arrows in a little bit more detail. So let's pick this example here. The arrow gives you a very clear indication as to which direction the tide's going in. Now if you want to make a tidal calculation, you need to measure that arrow. Or more precisely, you need to measure the direction in which that arrow is indicating. To do that, you use a plotter, just like this. You line it across your tidal atlas, like so. And you use the lines going up the side as your north lines. You orientate your plotter like so in the same way as we would on a normal chart we then go and we can read off that tidal direction in this case 271. The last thing we need to know is how strong the tidal stream is at the particular time we're interested in. The information we can get from this chart is contained within these numbers here. You can see there's two sets of numbers there's a 1 and a 7, then what looks like a decimal place, and a 3 and a 2 in this particular example. The 1 and the 7 actually means 1.7 knots. And the 3 and the 2 actually refer to 3.2 knots. So what we have here are two numbers, 1.7 and 3.2. The neap rate and the spring rate. We will look at how we can interpolate between those two, that is if we're somewhere between neaps and springs in a later video.